To explain your sampling technique properly, I recommend a real simple three-step approach. What, how, why. You can apply this to most aspects of the exploration. But for the sampling technique, what sampling technique did you use, how did you use it, and why. You can do that in about three sentences. That's all it takes, that's where you need to get top marks. Now, what sampling technique did you use? You're most likely have going to have used an opportunity sample. That's, that's by far the most popular sampling technique there is. You may have used a volunteer sample, also called a self-selected sample, right? That's a possibility. I don't recommend using a random sample. That's because most students uh, explain it improperly or they'll say I used a random sample but really they use an opportunity sample. They might say something like we randomly went into a classroom and asked who was there. That's not a random sample by the way. Random sample means you take all the possible target population, get all their names and then you use some sort of um, random generator to then go and ask people to be in your study. Practically speaking, it's not advisable, it's really tricky, stick to an opportunity sample or a self-selected sample. Now the IB has actually made it really easy to explain the use of an opportunity sample. Love said that all you have to say is you've used an opportunity sample because that is the most convenient. There we have it, that's all you have to do. I don't accept that for my own students in my own classrooms and I'm gonna explain why. First of all, if you don't tell me how you've uh, gathered your sample, how do I know that you've stated the right sampling technique? I need to know how. If you just go what to why, how do I know it was the right one? So uh, yeah, that's one reason why I don't expect, accept that really limited explanation. We use an opportunity sample because it was convenient. Another reason is I think, why wouldn't everyone just do an opportunity sample then? Because you only have to have a two sentence explanation and it's the easiest one to apply. So it kind of takes out any thinking or thought process in the, in the IA um, procedures, right? And, and choosing what sampling technique to use. So I don't want my students to do that. I want them to really carefully think about, well, do we use an opportunity sample or, or a self-selected sample? Now, another reason why I don't do it is because if you look at these examples on my IB, two of the examples, they have that the examiners have given them full credit for the, that really basic explanation. But one of the examples, the examiner has written that the design type is stated, but there's no explanation of how the sample was gathered. So for that examiner, at least, on that sample, they want the how, they're like me. So how do you know that the examiner reading your paper is gonna be, which advice are they following? The, the one that said it's okay just to not have the how and just say why you did it, or the one that's saying to have the how? That for me is, is, is why I go with the what, how, why. Here's an example from an IA I wrote on media and body dissatisfaction. Now note that that would be an unethical study to do, which is why uh, it's a perfect exemplar because you can't copy it, but you can see the structure, what, how, and why. Now here's a tricky part. Some, it, it, there's often a really fine line, right? We can't say, you know, self-selected or a volunteer sample because our participants volunteered. You're not having participants against their will, even an opportunity sample. So the explanation of because they volunteered is not quite enough, right? So um, what does make an opportunity sample or compared to a, what does make it a volunteer sample? Here's where I would draw the distinction and shout out to Alan Law if you're watching this. Alan, I think years ago you made this distinction for me and it really makes sense for me, which is the opportunity sample is Think about it as the researcher approaching the participants. They're the ones available, I'm the one going to them because they are ready at the time that I want to do the experiment. A self-selected or volunteer sample, think of it more of the researcher has put out some sort of advertising, some sort of marketing, said here, come be in my study, and it's the participants who are coming to the researcher. Right, so just think about who's approaching whom. Right? And that, that might clarify it. And so there's a, a good example would be uh, if you, uh, email a group of students and say, or email a class, right? And say, hey, um, who would like to come to this room at this time and be in my experiment? Please let me know. Now, you've, you've done the advertising, but they're the ones coming to you. They're self-selecting coming to you to be in your study. If you email a class and ask the teacher, hey, can I come to your class and do this experiment at this time? Are they available? Um, and the teacher says, yes, that's great. Come and do it at that time. You're the one going to them. You're approaching them at the time that they're available that's opportunity. So that's how I would draw that distinction. All right, there we have it. Just remember what, how, why. That's simple. Good luck.